and the adventure continues. The DCAU, also known as the DC Animated Universe, is a universe unlike anyone has ever seen, except the fans who praise the work. With Bruce Timm at the helm, the DCAU is considered the golden standard of DC animation, or even animation itself, especially with countless stories that interconnect, but can also stand alone as pieces of cinema. So, to unravel all the movies and shows in Bruce Timm's well-beloved animated universe, let's explore the evolution of the DC Animated Universe timeline. Number 1. Batman The Animated Series We begin with the first title in the DCAU, which is a classic beloved series that requires no introduction. While by day he is Gotham's billionaire orphan, and by night he becomes the Cape Crusader, Batman has numerous adventures and close calls to death where his skills and intellect are tested. The series also explores the origins of his rogues gallery, featuring villains such as the Joker, Two-Face, Mr. Freeze, Catwoman, and Rachel Ghoul, who continuously have plots in Gotham, but the show also gives the spotlight to underrated villains like the Clock King, Hugo Strange, and Scarface. Despite Batman's everlasting crusade to stop crime, when his rogues gallery poses too much of a challenge, he has allies like Alfred, Robin, Batgirl, and Commissioner Gordon to help him. Additionally, Batman takes on more grounded adventures including dealing with mob bosses, fighting past enemies, helping past friends, and working with his childhood hero. Now about Zuko. I ain't no squealer. You get nothing out of me. You hear? Nothing. I'm uh, Stromwell. He's with Stromwell, okay? Number 2. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. Now onto the film that takes place during the series. A new mysterious vigilante arises in Gotham and begins murdering crime bosses. While Batman begins investigating, he reconciles losing his first love, Andrea Beaumont, where flashbacks reveal the relationship and his debut in crime fighting. However, after Bruce proposes to her with plans to give up his vigilante career and commitment to fighting injustice, she accepts, but later ends it when she's forced to go into hiding with her father after he embezzled the Velestra mob. Being denied happiness, Bruce turns back to embrace the darkness and becomes Batman. Back in the present, while the Phantasm kills another crime boss of the Velestra mob, Bruce reconnects with Andrea, only to learn that she is the Phantasm and that she plans to murder the Joker for killing her father. They took everything, Bruce. My dad, my life, you. So either help me or get out of the way. But Andy, what will vengeance solve? If anyone knows the answer to that, Bruce, it's you. Number 3. Batman The Animated Series We return to the series for the remaining episodes where Batman continues to have unforgettable adventures. This time, he battles new enemies who come to Gotham, like Bane, an assassin hired to end Batman, Baby Doll, a former actress who kidnaps her former cast, the terrible trio, rich frat boys who dress up as apex predators to commit crimes for the thrill, and Lockup, a paranoid ex-prison guard who aims to imprison everyone. Of course, his common rogues gallery always causes chaos, but through their encounters, he has memorable experiences. These include being put on trial by Arkham inmates with the Joker as the judge, investigating the Riddler despite everyone believing he's reformed, traveling to London to save Alfred from Red Claw, and working with Harley to locate the Joker. Batman! What, what do you want? Not what, Slimeball. Who? Uh, Vinny the Shark. He's not my connection anymore. Wrong answer. <laughs> Number 4. Superman The Animated Series Moving on to another iconic series in the DCAU, knowing that the planet Krypton is doomed, Jor-El and Lara send their son Kal-El away before it explodes. Of course, he arrives on Earth, is adopted by Jonathan and Martha Kent, gets his name Clark, discovers he has powers, and learns about his past. Eventually, he moves to Metropolis to work at the Daily Planet, where after going public with his powers, Lois Lane dubs him Superman. As he embraces his role as a superhero, the series explores his growing rogues gallery, including Lex Luthor, Brainiac, Parasite, Metallo, and Toyman, 
but he also discovers his weakness to kryptonite. Similar to Batman, through Superman's adventures, when he has too much to handle, he has allies to aid him like Lois and Jimmy, but especially Professor Hamilton, who creates his suits and helps him with his technology. It's the Nietzschean fantasy ideal all wrapped up in a red cape. The Superman. Superman? Hey, I like it. Superman. It's catchy, sticks with you, the kind of name that looks great splashed across three columns. Number 5. Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero Following an episode which ended with Mr. Freeze stranded in the Arctic with his wife Nora, Victor lives peacefully with two polar bears and a young boy. However, when researchers accidentally break into his home, Nora's cryogenic chamber shatters, forcing her disease to accelerate. Two weeks later, Freeze returns to Gotham, demanding his former colleague to help him find a cure. As they realize that she needs a transplant, they hit another complication as her blood type is extremely rare. When Freeze learns that there are no available organs, he kidnaps Barbara Gordon because she's a perfect match. Batman and Robin then investigate and follow his trail, but while they rescue Barbara and Nora, Freeze seemingly perishes. The film however ends on a happy note, as Victor discovers that Bruce funded Nora's organ transplant, which was a success. I know who he is. Everyone in Gotham knows you. And I know who that is too. I thought your wife was dead. She will be dead if you don't help her. That's what this is about, isn't it? It's about her. Number 6. The New Batman Adventures Back in Gotham, the Dark Knight returns, but all designs have a revamped look, like the sky which is now always dark red. Some of the characters who also have very noticeable changes are Batman, the Joker, Batgirl, the Riddler, Bane, the Scarecrow, Mr. Freeze, Catwoman, and Poison Ivy. Now through Batman's crusade, his rogues gallery expands with new villains like Firefly, Clarion the Witch Boy, and Roxy Rocket, but he has new allies to aid him, including Tim Drake's Robin, Nightwing, Etrigan, and the Creeper. With new adventures, Batman's most notable ones include a fallout with Robin, where Dick quit as a sidekick, how he met Tim and took him as his new sidekick, a nightmare where the GCPD hunts Batman for never revealing that Barbara was Batgirl before her death, and finally Bruce getting married to someone he just met, before realizing that Poison Ivy is behind it. How's that arm? Better than the Joker's. Close one this time. Mm. They're all close ones. Well, here's to survival. Hopefully we'll be doing this again next New Year's Eve. Hopefully. Number 7. Chase Me In the same animated art style, this 6 minute short film is a bonus feature for DVD, which has a chase sequence that is strictly instrumental with no voice acting. It opens on the penthouse level of Wayne Enterprises, where Bruce gazes out a window and is called to the dance floor, before signaling Alfred to cause a distraction. He then heads to his office, where he finds Catwoman looting his safe, so Batman chases her across Gotham and ends up following her to a zoo where he is attacked. However, when he corners Catwoman, she attempts to kiss him, which he does, but handcuffs her for the police. Back in the penthouse, he again gazes out the window and is in remorse for leaving her, but is called back to the dance floor. Number 8. Superman The Animated Series Now returning to Metropolis, the remaining seasons and episodes have the best adventures that are critical to Superman's character. Through his new ones, he meets superheroes and allies with them, including The Flash, Doctor Fate, Aquaman, Green Lantern, Steel, and Supergirl, but his rogues gallery also grows with Livewire, Weather Wizard, Mixius Spitlick, Bizarro, Jack Sewer, and Luminous. But let's not forget when he teams up with Batman, which initially has issues, but they put their differences aside to stop both Lex Luthor and the Joker. Now his most critical adventures are when Darkseid invades Earth, but after his retreat, he kidnaps Superman, brainwashes him to become his servant, and turns him against the Earth to claim the planet for himself. Superman however overcomes the brainwashing and defeats Darkseid, but everyone is reluctant to ever trust him again. 
I'm locking my bedroom door at night. He's a traitor and a menace. Don't listen to them. No. They're right. I did lose control, and it scares me. If I can't trust myself, how can I win back the trust of an entire planet? Number 9. Batman, Mystery of the Batwoman Back in Gotham, a new female bat vigilante appears and targets a weapons shipment. While Batman and Robin investigate to discover her identity, all evidence points to Rocky and Kathy, as each has a different motive for ruining the canes, thorns, and the penguin's operation. Rocky's motive is Penguin framing her fiancé, and Kathy's is that her father's responsible for her mother's death. Batman then becomes stumped, as they both have alibis when Batwoman appears, until he realizes Sonia, a new cop, also has a motive. Thorne's arsonist burned her parents' shop, which her family could never recover from. As all three are Batwoman, where each could give the other alibis so no one can uncover the truth, they prepare to end the weapons operation. Though, when Kathy gets caught, Rocky and Sonya suit up to fight, while Batman fights Bane and saves Kathy. Each of you brought something to the party. Kathy had the money, Rocky had the genius, and you, you had the scheme and the will to make it happen. Three Batwomen. It was just a matter of disguising your voices and taking turns. Number 10. Justice League. In the series to tie all the adventures from the previous shows and films, a secret invasion unites Earth's greatest heroes. While we've already seen Batman, Superman, and The Flash, the show introduces Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern John Stewart, and Hawkgirl. Together, they defeat the invading aliens and force them to retreat, but after deciding they can do a lot more united, they become the Justice League and operate out of their HQ, the Watchtower. They go on countless adventures, where each has a unique way of testing the team's chemistry and coordination. Some of the most interesting missions include battling the Injustice League, traveling back in time to stop Vandal Savage, fighting the Justice Lords, a rogue Justice League in an alternate dimension, fighting the Secret Society, and stopping a Thanagarian invasion from destroying the Earth. Working together, we saved the planet. And I believe that if we stayed together as a team, we would be a force that could truly work for the ideals of peace and justice. What? Like a bunch of super friends? More like a Justice League. Number 11. Static Shock. Now we head to Dakota, where Virgil Hawkins, a young student, trying to get out of a gang leads him to the middle of a gang war. When the police arrive and shoot tear gas to break the fight, they hit canisters that cause an explosion and release a gas which mutates everyone. Virgil gets exposed to it and learns the next day he can control electricity, so he tells his best friend Richie, decides to be a superhero, dons an iconic suit, and becomes static. Anyone exposed to the gas is dubbed a bang baby, so in Static's adventures, he faces off against these metahumans such as Hotstreak, Ebon, Shiv, and Talon. When times get tough, he has allies like Rubber Band Man, a former criminal turned hero, and of course Richie, who becomes a superhero named Gear. Additionally, he has crossovers, where he teams up with Batman and Robin, Green Lantern, Superman, and the Justice League. For a rookie, you did well, Static. But I can tell you're gonna be a handful when you finally join the League. I'm sorry, did you say when I joined the League? Anything's possible, when you're a little older. Number 12, Justice League Unlimited. A direct continuation from its predecessor, the League greatly expands while focusing on the original members. The first arc revolves around the government division, Cadmus, against the Justice League. As Superman went rogue and the Justice Lords overthrew their government, to protect themselves, Amanda Waller became director of Cadmus with Lex as a benefactor. While the League continues to go on adventures to protect the Earth, where each episode has a small team deal with an issue, Cadmus creates Doomsday and the Ultiman. However, when Amanda realizes Lex has his own agenda, destroying Cadmus and becoming a super-powered immortal, she works with the League to stop him when he merges with Brainiac. After the League defeats him, the final arc focuses on a new secret society, which operates in the shadows while avoiding League attention. Though when Lex unintentionally causes Darkseid's return, who begins another invasion, the entire League bands together to fight Darkseid and his army. 
Each of us is willing to make the sacrifices a hero needs to make, even the ultimate one. Since there are so many of us, we have a chance to do more than just put out fires, both literal and figurative. We can do some real good in the world, but we're going to have to be organized. Number 13. Batman and Harley Quinn Following Justice League Unlimited, Jason Woodrow and Poison Ivy attack Star Labs to retrieve information. As they later kidnap a specialist to help create a virus that turns people into plants, Batman and Nightwing investigate, but unable to locate Ivy, they decide to recruit Harley Quinn. When the virus fails, Jason and Ivy realize they need to retrieve the water that gave birth to Swamp Thing. As Batman uncovers their plan, they follow their trail, where he and Nightwing battle Jason, while Harley cries as a last resort to convince Ivy not to go through with her plan. Swamp Thing appears to tell Jason this isn't the way to fix the green, but reveals he won't interfere and leaves, which was pointless. Out of options to stop Jason, Harley recommends using a match, so after Batman strikes one, he and Nightwing give her a kiss and set him on fire. It's bad enough if they succeed and we all live as plant people, but that's not even the worst case scenario. If any part of their plan is off, even a slight bit, within weeks, days maybe, we could be looking at the extinction of all life on the planet. Number 14. Justice League vs. The Fatal Five In the 31st century, three members of The Fatal Five attack Legion HQ to steal their time ship and travel into the past. Starboy follows and traps them in a stasis field, but due to his partial amnesia, he creates a scene forcing Batman to take him to Arkham. Ten months later, Jessica Cruz is struggling to cope with her trauma and questioning why she was chosen as a Green Lantern. Unfortunately, the League accidentally frees the captives, and as the three try to get her attention, Starboy breaks out of Arkham. The League arrives to help them fight, but Jessica surrenders to save cities from blowing up and is forced to release the two members imprisoned on Oa. Emerald Empress then sends her eye to destroy the sun while the five return to the future though Jessica arrives and stops their escape. When Superman fails to stop the eye, Starboy makes the ultimate sacrifice to save the sun, protecting the present and the future. I think none of us will ever be able to look at the sun again without thinking about what Thomas did for us. For all of us. But he did even more for me. He told me I was brave until I believed it. Number 15. Batman Beyond after his League adventures, Batman is back with a new black and red suit, but during a low threat fight, he has a stroke because he's old, and in a moment of desperation, pulls a gun on them. While he doesn't shoot, he decides to never be Batman again. Now 20 years later, we meet Terry McGinnis, an ordinary teenager with problems, but when fate leads him to Bruce, he accidentally discovers the Batcave and his secret identity. Afterwards, Terry's father investigates a scandal at Wayne Powers, but dies because of it. So taking matters into his own hands, Terry becomes Batman. He then makes his father's killer pay, and takes on the mantle as Bruce's protege, where he goes on unique adventures. Of course, besides Bruce, he has allies like Barbara, the new commissioner, Max, his best friend, Ace, Bruce's dog, Zeta, an android with a conscience, and the new Justice League. However, he also makes new enemies like Blight, Shriek, Ink, and the Royal Flush Gang. The first time I programmed this thing, it didn't seem to take nearly this long. It's okay with me. I can use the rest. Terry, it's only the suit that's out of commission, not Batman. Number 16, The Zeta Project. In the spin-off, the series focuses on Zeta, the government's highly classified infiltration synthoid that can take on human identities. While on the run, Zeta saves a human named Roe from being killed, who later helps him escape as Agent Bennett and his team are determined to reprogram him. Though Roe grew up in foster care, she grows close to Zeta and decides to help him get his freedom while also teaching him about being human. Zeta and Roe then go on various adventures, but their ultimate objective is to locate Dr. Selig the man who created Zeta. They hope to persuade Selig that Zeta has surpassed his killer programming so he can persuade Bennett and the NSA to stop pursuing him. They spend most of the series trying to meet with Selig, but usually miss him or are interrupted by Agent Bennett, who remains unconvinced that Zeta can be peaceful. 
My name is Zeta. I'm a U.S. government infiltration unit designed to replace and destroy targeted individuals. I discovered that one man I was sent after was innocent. And that meant any of them could be innocent. So I refused to hurt him and ran. Now they think I am the enemy. Number 17. Darwin Cook's Batman Beyond. In the same animated art style as Batman Beyond, this one-minute short film aired on television to commemorate 75 years of the Dark Knight. Terry arrives in the Batcave, only to find Bruce injured next to the Bat computer, who reveals that his attacker is him. A power failure then causes a blackout, so when the emergency red lights kick in, Batman, in his new adventure suit, arises and attacks Terry. Terry tries to fight back and is unsuccessful, until he punches him and discovers he's an android. After Terry uses a device to stun the android, Bruce voice activates the Batmobile's ignition to incinerate it. In the dark about who sent it, they realize it wasn't alone as the shortcuts to androids of the Batman multiverse from Beware the Batman, The Batman, Batman the Brave and the Bold, The Dark Knight Returns, 89 Batman, 60s Batman, and finally the Detective Comics Batman. Who sent that thing? It didn't say. Whoever it was, they didn't stop at one. Seven against two. Pretty bad odds. For them. Number 18. Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. After two years as Batman, Terry tries to stop a new gang of Jokers. Although they manage to escape, when Bruce later retakes control of his company, they attack, where the Joker appears leaving Bruce astonished. Knowing he's dangerous, Bruce asks Terry to return the suit, but Terry refuses. So to protect him, Bruce resorts to angering him enough to make him quit. However, when Joker attacks Bruce in the Batcave, Terry returns and finds him catatonic with a smile, so after administering an antidote, he turns to Barbara demanding answers. She reveals that 40 years ago, Joker kidnapped him and turned him into Joker Jr., but was ultimately killed by Tim. Realizing Tim is the connection, Terry and Bruce discover that he's the new Joker, as the original implanted a microchip, making Tim unaware. Terry then battles the Joker, and manages to short out the chip, allowing Tim to fully recover. Gordon told me what happened to Tim Drake. That's why I didn't want you going up against the Joker. Imposter or not. Nothing against your old partners, but I'm a completely different Batman. I was never a Robin, I never... Number 19. Justice League Unlimited Returning to the series and focusing on only one episode, the plot takes place about 12 years after the Batman Beyond film. The episode serves as the conclusion to the Batman Beyond storyline, which opens with Terry breaking into Amanda Waller's home as he seeks answers regarding a recent discovery. When Bruce needed a donor to clone new tissue, Terry was a perfect histocompatibility match, so he ran a DNA test and discovered he was Bruce's son. He's angry believing Bruce would do anything to get a successor. However, Amanda reveals that she's responsible for overriding his DNA. She praises Bruce for his efforts and believes that the world will always need a Batman. Terry still thinks being Batman is a curse, especially in his personal life, but Amanda convinces him to take care of the people who love him if he wants a better life than Bruce's. You're not Bruce's clone. You're his son. There are similarities, mind you, but more than a few differences, too. You don't quite have his magnificent brain, for instance. You do have his heart, though. Now, with the end of this pinnacle universe, comment down below which film or series in the DCAU was your favorite. But make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram for updates. Until the end, I'll see you in the next video.